Well, let's bring in more voices reflecting on the life of the late Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu. Well, the Muslim Judicial Council says it will remember Tutu as one of the fiercest critics of Israel. The council's deputy president, Mulana Abdul Khalik, Khalik Ali, joins me now from Cape Town. Mulana, I've got to thank you for your time. Just your own reflections as an organization upon the passing of the late Archbishop Emeritus Tutu. Well, on behalf of the South African Muslim community and on behalf of the Muslim Judicial Council, let us uh, tender our sincere uh, condolences and sympathies to Mama Lia and the family and the Desmond Tutu Foundation, the Legacy Foundation, and all the friends uh, and followers of Desmond Tutu across the globe. Uh, indeed, we have lost a giant, a man that has a walk the talk, a man that has led from the front, a uh, person who has laid down uh, his life for South Africa, for justice, for peace, for uh, raising the voice in recent times against corruption. And uh, truly, uh, we are extremely grateful that the Muslim Judicial Council enjoyed a very healthy working relationship with uh, Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu. Our former president, uh, Sheikh Nadi Muhammad, they were personal friends and uh, they joined many, many platforms in uh, sharing uh, for the struggle against uh, the apartheid system. So, yes, uh, I had the privilege of meeting Archbishop Desmond Tutu a number of times and shared the platform with him. And it was always uh, a matter of being uh, inspirational, being in his company, his unique way of uh, addressing and coming across and inspiring people is uh, his legacy. Yeah. Mulana, talk to me about w what is the big lesson for us as South Africans uh, and I suppose as, as humanity uh, from the life of um, Archbishop Emeritus uh, Desmond Tutu about, I don't know if there's such a concept as divinity in humanity, um, in that, you know, through his humanity, um, bridges could be built. It really didn't matter what faith you belonged to, but your humanity came first. And in your human humanity, uh, God was seen. Uh, am I on the right track here? Is that one of the big lessons, uh, perhaps, from the life of the late Archbishop Emeritus? Well, when we, when we reflect upon the life of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, that is a very strong lesson that comes through where he embraced all and where um, as a muslim community we can speak about our own experiences desmond tutu created the space he made sure that the voice of the muslim community and that of sheikh nadim at the time and imam hassan uh, hassan solomons and others were heard and it could be able to be shared with the masses out there. And so that embracing personality was truly reflective when we speak about uh, his humanity. And, uh, and, and that carried him through, I believe, in, in, in all spheres of his life and in, in his entire life, in actual fact, in the apartheid uh, time, in that struggle at that time. And, and post-apartheid in recent times, he created such platforms where people were welcome and where people were able to say uh, that we have joined Desmond Tutu because he created such an opportunity. And having shared platforms with him from time to time, do you have any you know, particular anecdotes that stand out that you would share with us? Because, of course, it's, it's, it's a big part uh, of the man's legacy. I mean, part of the words uh, that the foundation tells us, he wanted us to remember him by, say, quote, he laughed, he cried, he loved, end quote. So that's, that, that, that's part of how he wanted us to remember him. Uh, that that, that, that uh, well-known, uh, you know, shrieking uh, laughter uh, from time to time uh, when he would be asked a question and he would start maybe by just laughing initially before launching into uh, giving an answer. Uh, that's certainly uh, one of the experiences that many would have heard with him. So I'm just wondering on your side, uh, your interactions with him, one or two anecdotes that stand out. In fact, 
that that was one of the unique features of the arch and he made it his very special people would know and would expect it to come at one given in time during his presentation i recall uh, the largest um, post apartheid uh, protest peaceful protest march that we led as the uh, nc4p the national coalition for palestine and the arch was uh, one of our favorite guest speakers at that particular occasion and uh, estimatedly 150,000 people attended that particular protest march he started some with symbolically with that particular wonderful way of drawing the crowd to him with that particular laughter of his that was very unique to him and that is one of those particular features that people uh, would remember of the arch and having said that uh, my my own experience tells me and and listening to the arch it it came with deep reflection those particular laughters were not hollowed it was rather deep deep in thought and reflection and hence it was meaningful when he expressed himself uh, in that particular regard